Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. Thank you for joining us today. I came fully prepared to preach on Nehemiah chapter 7 and 8. I was fired up to do so. I was excited to get back in the groove after being on vacation. But I got a phone call from a friend named Elizabeth who told me that a good friend of mine, Avi, was here from Israel. So he's straight away from Tel Aviv. He and his wife and family are here to celebrate with us today. And he agreed to actually go ahead and preach on Nehemiah. Nehemiah, I think if I'm pronouncing it a little bit better, a little bit more Jewish there, but uh, he, he agreed to preach in line with what we're talking about. There's a whole bunch of names, like a list of names like this long. He's going to go over every one of them and teach us how to say it in Hebrew today. So we're going to go through the scriptures, but really... Um, they're, they're becoming dear friends in our life. We met he and his family a couple of years ago uh, when he was in town here in Jacksonville, and they invited us to go to Israel and see the ministry that they had going on. So um, Mary Jo and I went a year ago, and we got to witness firsthand some of the ministries that they have going on. He pastors a congregation called Adonai Roi, and they meet on the border of really Jaffa and Tel Aviv, and they have a Messianic Jewish congregation there. They have a coffee house that's like one block off of the club scene street that's there in the heart of Tel Aviv. So all the nightclubs are there. So they have a coffee house and they give out free coffee to passers-by. We got to minister on the street in that context. Let me tell you, it's better to get them before they go to the club than after they come back <laughs> from the club. Can I get an amen? You hear what I'm saying, right? They have a prayer room that's there that overlooks the city of Tel Aviv and they pray and intercede and have other congregations that join them in that as well. One of my favorite moments, he and his wife shared with us at Independence Hall, uh, I think, is it on Ben Gurron Street, if I recall? I might be wrong. He could correct it, but uh, it, and it, it was just beautiful to see a nation birthed and get the history, and they shared with us about that from a Messianic believer perspective. It was absolutely an incredible time. He has a video that he'd love to show you. We had trouble converting it, so what I'm going to do is post it on our Facebook page a little bit later on, so when you go home, please check out the link that I'll be posting. It'll tell you a a lot more about their ministry, but also after the service, please go back there and meet him and some of his team members who are at the table in the back. Um, the ministry that they have is called Dugit. It means little boat. He'll tell you a little bit more about it. Would you give Pastor Avi Mizrahi a warm Journey Church welcome? Thank you. Thank you. I just want to Honor your pastor. They've been very faithful, supporting us, praying for us in this wonderful church. In fact, last year we had a banquet here. Yes. And you did everything. I was like amazed. So we just brought you a small gift here. Thank you. <laughs> Kindling. We have coffee, the git coffee. All right. And, and, then in the, and then we have two cups here, one for you, one for your wife so that when you get up in the morning, you remember to pray for us, the Git. It all Amen. starts with a cup of coffee. Amen? It does. And if you're ever in Tel Aviv, be sure to stop by the coffee shop and tell them you're from Journey Church. They will give you a free cup of coffee. God bless you. Only if they behave, you know. Yes. <laughs> God bless you. Thank Love you. you. Amen. <sighs> Shalom, church. Oh, this is so wonderful to know you all speak Hebrew. Okay, I'm going to speak now in Hebrew, and Pastor Eric is going to translate into English. He's gone. <laughs> Anyhow, before I forget, again, go to the table, and we brought all this wonderful... Ma this is the first time we have done a beautiful magazine. It's in English, and it gives all the information about us. So please stop by the table and take as many as you want. You see, I cannot take them back home. They read Hebrew, so it doesn't help. Okay? So take it as much as you can with you. Okay? Um, we're going to read from the book of Nehemiah. I know you say Nehemiah, but let me teach you some Hebrew this morning. Can you say Nehemiah? You got it. Just clear your throat. <laughs> you know? Good. Very good. Well, Nehemiah in Hebrew means 
Yah is short for Yehovah, Jehovah, and Nechama means comfort. So basically, this prophet by the name of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, his name means God comforts. Is that beautiful? And um, we are going to read from uh, chapter 7, and I'm going to read from verse uh, 1 to 5. Verse 1 to 5. Then it was when the wall was built, and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem, in Hebrew, Yerushalayim, to my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot, and while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his own house. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few and the houses were not built. Then my God put it into my heart to gather the nobles, the rulers, and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found written in it. And from there it goes all the list of names. So I'm going to let your pastor read it tomorrow, okay? All the list of names. Now I'm just teasing you. It's a long list of names, Hebrew names. And we don't have the time to go over it. But I do want to go to uh, verse 2. In verse 2 it talks about, I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel. Now, what does it mean, the leader of the citadel? Well, basically, remember the period? They took them a while until they were able to uh, 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 fix the walls, and then they put the gates. Now, we live in the 21st century. It's like, we don't understand what's all the big deal. Well, in those days, it was a big deal. If you were living in a city and you, didn't, you were not protected by big walls, you were in trouble. Why? Because the enemies could come anytime and just burn your city or destroy it. Or in the evenings, the bandits would come and, 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 and steal your, your car, well, you didn't have car, your camel, or whatever you had, or, or, or take, take your kids and, and, and sell them to slave or kill your wife. I mean, this was very important in those days that you have the walls of the city to protect you and you had the big gates and you had the watchmen on the walls to protect it in case there is danger. So this was a very important thing. So to put the person in charge of all the watchtowers and the watchmen was a very high position. It's like the sheriff of the town of Jacksonville. Okay? So, we hear about this guy. He was a faithful man. And in Hebrew it says there, uh, Ish Emet, which means he was a man of truth. Man of truth, he was a righteous man. And then it says, and he feared God. He was a God-fearing man. You know, if you want to be a wise man, what do you need to do? Fear God. Be beginning of wisdom, right? Now, I just want to quickly share, because earlier our dear brother shared about, you know, feared God, and I'd like to take a minute and share about this. In Hebrew, for the word fear, we have two words. In English, you have one word, and you miss it. In Hebrew, we have two words. One is pachad, and one is ira. What's the difference? Big difference. You see, if you want to talk about the fear of the night, pachad laila in Hebrew, or you're afraid at night you go to a dark alley and you're scared somebody will come and beat you up and steal your money, you use the word pachad. But when you want to talk about the fear of God, you talk about ira adonai. It's a different word. And that, what does it really mean? It means is that comes from the word of seeing. In other words, when you see God, what happens? suddenly you realize how awesome God is, how wonderful He is, how good He is. And what happens? Suddenly you realize how small we are and we serve such an awesome, 
great God. What comes, what happens? The fear of God comes into you, and what do you want to do? You want to honor him and worship him, knowing that he is an awesome God, that without him, we are lost. Amen? Amen. You can do better than that. Amen? Amen? Just making sure I'm in the right place. This is not a mosque, is it? <laughs> oh, then you're alive. You had your cup of coffee this morning. That's good. Hallelujah. Yes. Hananiah. You know, by the way, the name Hananiah means Hananiah. Yah is short for Jehovah, Lord. Hanan, Hananiah means mercy. So the guy's name is the mercy of God. Boy, I like to join this team, don't you? Hananiah and Nehemiah. The mercy of God and God comforts. It's important to, be, to have the right team. Amen? Okay, let's, so we know they work together. Praise God, they work together. Now let's continue to chapter 8. Okay, so let's turn to chapter 8, and I'll read from verse 1 to uh, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in the open square that was in the front of the water gate from morning until mid midday before the men and women those who could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Now, I like to point out that in verse 3, where it says from morning until midday, in Hebrew there it says from or rishon, which means the first light. Well, in, back home in Israel, when we wake up and we, the first light is about 6 o'clock in the morning, this morning I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning and Jacksonville, it was still dark. <laughs> so can you imagine that basically that was, they called for a gathering and they, everybody showed up and they were there from 6 o'clock in the morning till what time? Okay. Till noon. How many hours? Six. Six hours. So let me throw this out for a moment. Can you imagine if I would call for a big gathering in Jacksonville and invite the whole city of Jacksonville next Sunday at 6 o'clock in the morning and not to come under a nice air-conditioned building but come out in the parking lot and not sit in nice comfortable chairs but stand for six hours while I read the scriptures. 